Good evening, everyone, and welcome to um, this meeting of the Municipal Budget Committee. Today is December 10th. Everyone would rise for Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Tonight we will be going forward with our workshop. It may not be a long evening tonight, but um, we will start as usual. Uh, going around the table, Sonny, we're going to start with you tonight for introductions. Dr. Jerry Zanar here. Mike Pierce. Brian Lavin. John Rice, Secretary. Eileen Latimer, Chairman. Mike Bluff. Stephen LeBrange. Richard Renier. Joe Kuzbowski. Clint Farrell. Dave Wood. Jim Waddell. Thank you. And tonight we're going to start out with Parks and Recreation. Do we have our director joining us? Good evening, Diana. Good evening. How are you? Usually we keep you and have you come in early and wait until we <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. I thought it was only fair we changed that a little bit this year. Thanks. As you know, and I'm sorry some of the questions got up late. That was my fault. I thought I had already sent them. Okay. There weren't too many. I got the answers. Okay. How we have started with things is to actually start with the questions um, after Jim moves the department number. And the questions that were asked, if you would just give us the answers to those by section. Okay. Or if it's all in one Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just going to go by order of what you asked me. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Okay. And, but as usual, the questioning is still open and we'll go around sure. the table. So basically, the questions that you received and then um, the rest of your presentation on your budget and then we'll go around as usual and ask our questions and so on and so forth. Okay, I move uh, <clears throat> two hundred and thirty-four thousand eighteen dollars second. Madam Chair, uh, can I make a, just a statement? Sure. Please about the first question because since the the, the nine percent raise came from the, the town manager and the board of selectmen, uh, you know, voted for that, and it was controversial, I'm sure. You know, I just wanted to make a statement about why the Board of Selectmen did that, what their feeling was, what their thoughts were. Number one, that the Recreation Department, you know, uh, services the youth from the youngest citizens to the oldest citizens in town 12 months out of the year. That it takes care of uh, all the parks in town, the, the grounds in town. That it's responsible for the town beach and the um, lifeguards, managing the lifeguards, which is a real safety issue. Um, that it has recreational programs, both athletic, uh, cultural, artistic, summer programs, in-state uh, trips, out-of-state trips, international trips, um, and they're in charge of the summer parking lots. Our recreation director has 17 years here, a master's degree in education. 19. In, uh, 19. 19. <laughs> yeah. Uh, master's degree in education keeps up all the time on continue education, a lot of certificates and awards. And for all of that, she was paid $22,000 under the average, the lowest paid recreational director in the state. So $22,000 under the average. So when we were talking about giving a raise, what we were thinking about is getting the person up to where they should be, which this does not do in itself. And I think we have to really think about to ourselves is, are we rewarding our employees for what they're doing. Are we rewarding the departments for what they're doing? And when you talk about a recreation department, I think New Hampshire is becoming, if not now, the oldest state demographically in the country. And you need youth, you need young families. And when a young family is thinking about moving into a town, they're going to look first at the school system, public safety, they're going to work at housing values, and they're going to look at recreational acti activities in the town and opportunities. And what does that have for them to attract them? So it was our feeling when we did that, and I know a lot of people said 9% raise, that, that, that it was a well-deserved and earned raise. So I just wanted to make that statement before we started. And Diana, before you go forward, I'm going to jump on that bandwagon too, Jim. For people who are new here, and even for 
to refresh the me memories of some people that were old. I sit older, uh, meaning more time here. God, I'm getting Thank older you. by the minute. <laughs> no, I know, I had, I had to clarify that. She looked right at me, did you right. notice that? <laughs> <laughs> We've had a lot of people come before us every year with increases. Diana's not one of them personally, for her own regard. There is a register by towns and by that. Fred, you have that in your office from NHMA, don't you? Yes. That it's also online. If any of you have any questions about some of the things we're talking about, it is online now, too, that you can go on and you can see other towns and what positions make. Even if we double that 9%, this woman's still not going to get to where she should be. That's not our job to make things right all the time. But some consideration should be given for the number of years that she hasn't asked for it because we were looking to keep a budget as lean as possible and she always felt it was selfish and she could manage where she was. In fairness, when you look at communities our size, <laughs> even one smaller than what we're paying and the work that's done. I know since I've been on the budget committee, she seems to, you know, as we call things a slush fund, she's like the slush fund of duties. You know, you need somebody to take care of the parks, give them to Diana. You need somebody to take care of the parking <laughs> lots, give them to Diana. You need somebody to take care of the lifeguards because the state bowed out, give them to Diana. Unfortunately, every time we did that, we did not give her any more money to go with it personally on her own end. <coughs> I don't think I've spoken up for any other increase in this budget round. However, I personally, through the years, having um, watched Diana work, have it seen the things that she's responsible for grow. And they're not little things. It's not like, you know, here, now you're responsible for filing this piece of paper. Um, lifeguards, parking lots, parks themselves. I mean, this is the recreation director fighting about lighting last year, okay? So that being said, I'm not going to belabor it, but I do want you to consider that, all right, as we go along. So having probably said too much already, Diane. Uh, excuse me, uh, Jim, you moved only the administration part of the total budget that we do. Yeah. Yeah. You moved the administration yeah. part as pot opposed by to... Pot. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. All right. right. So we're going to talk about administration only. Okay, so I think both of you kind of answered the question, the first question that I had, which was about regular wages. There was a second part to that question that I had to read a couple times to understand what it was, but there, uh, I think it was confusion Thank about you. another part, uh, another um, employee, and the question was, what is the fringe benefit cost of the part-time to full-time promotion? What I had done is because we have more and more responsibility in the Parks Department, over the years, we desperately need a full-time person back in that part of the department. I've spoken to the town manager and selectman about making um, one person in the parks department back to full-time position and added that into the budget this year. So that position moved from one line item, which was part-time, to another line item, which is full-time. Um, but this year, the selectman didn't think that this was the year for the change. So that person... Um, that person was moved back to the part-time line item. So that's why there was the change that you see in that okay. from 54-something to 80-something. Um, the town manager also, um, recognizing that we needed more manpower in the parks, did add a little bit of money there so that I could hire another part-timer to fill that void. Okay, okay, so there is no fringe benefits associated. Okay. No. Uh, okay, now. So that's your third question. Yeah, there but no the... the the 9%, this first line of regular wages, is that all you, Diane? That's me and Renee. You and Renee. Yeah. Uh, she's full-time? He is. He, he is. <laughs> yeah, he's been here 15 years. So that's Renee and you. Yep. Okay. So the next question talked about part-time wages, and when I looked at it again and again, it's it's... I'm answering that same question again. It's about, it's, the confusion is that that person was moved to full-time originally yeah. by me and then moved back to the part-time line. So it's just money moving back and forth virtually. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I can see where the, the part-time would bump if you had 
provisions for another. Right. Because your spending in that department historically has been. Um, Changes from year to year depending on what breaks and what needs to be fixed and what items need to be purchased different years. I'm looking at um, 011, it was 57,000, 012, it was 70,000, 013 was 71,000. Well, in part time. The, yeah, in the, in the um, budget also, some of the changes that have, have occurred is our secretary is now, we have two part time secretaries. So they moved from a different line also a few years ago. So what did they move from? Well, that was a full time job position. At oh, okay, I see. Hmm. I think I understand. I think the bump that I see here in the part time wages is provisions for another part timer. Yep. Seasonal and, employee. And there yep. is no move from part time to full time, hence Correct. no fringes. Correct. So as far as the administration goes, that's the end of the question. I think so. Okay. Under administration. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'll just go on. <laughs> so staff development is up 58%. Uh, um, I believe in the value of education and staying with the trends to the be, be the best that you can be. Like you said, I have an MBA. And I just believe that um, getting further education will help us to do our jobs a little bit better. So every year I budget for myself and Renee to go to certain conferences that I feel are valuable to our jobs um, and workshops. And on top of that, I put money in for conferences, <coughs> workshops, or college classes that might come up throughout the year that we weren't aware of. In, December or, or uh, October of the year before. Are these so seminars or college courses? What are these? It's all, it's all rolled yeah. into one. Some of them are college courses, some of them are workshops, some of them are schools. So having said that, um, I would have left that budget alone except that last year I was accepted into the NRPA Director School. This is a two-year school that is held at Ogilvy Park in Wheeling, West Virginia, and it's put on by the North Carolina State University and the National Recreation and Parks Association. So last year for year one, um, well actually the cost of the school is about $2,500, and last year I was able to find scholarship so that I was able to go to the, to the school for free last year. Um, but I won't be able to ask those same organizations for money for this year for scholarship which I'll still try to get because the school does the scholarship as well but um just in case I did put add that money into the budget so that I could go to the year two of school so was it a week or how it's long it's a week it's a week and eight hours a day for five days or something longer like that. than that just you yep yeah you have to be accepted to the school that'll be something Renee will probably do in a few years so how many years do you have to go back two. Oh, oh you've been one already Right. Totally, they'll give you a big ceremony and pomp and circumstance and all that stuff. Uh, no. <laughs> they'll, give me a nice and down. they'll give me a nice certificate that says Fred I completed goes. the school. <laughs> okay. So that's what the increase is. I there. got you. That answers that. Now, what is the name of that school again? It's the um, director school through the through the um, <laughs> National Recreation Parks Association in North Carolina State University. North Carolina stage now. Is that the Wolf Pack? Is that down in uh, Raleigh or where is that? The I don't know. North Carolina? I don't know where the school is in North Carolina. This school is held at Ogilvy Park in Wheeling, West Virginia. Oh, West Virginia. Okay, so the next question was lifeguards. And what I do with the lifeguards is I budget them for a specific amount of time. Yeah. So, but so far, I haven't been able to have them stretched out as far of a season as I was hoping, and I am still hoping to get them out there, because I would like to have the lifeguards <coughs> out on the beach while the season is, while people are out there swimming. So, I, I, I put them out there for a uh, certain amount of time, is what I budget for. Um, but unfortunately, because of schools or other work commitments, they usually can't start till a little bit later in the season. 
Also, weather is a factor, and on bad weather days when no one is at the beach, I will send the lifeguards home to save on the payroll. And there's always sick days and days that are needed off. So that's why the number that is spent is lower than what I budgeted for in the last few years. So where, where does the increase come from, though, Di? Well, I'm going to tell you that. Okay. <laughs> Having said that, I'm going to continue to budget for the amount of hours as I would like to have the longer season, and eventually this will happen, um, and I want the money there to do so. What I have done, though, the changes that I made is that I gave wage increases. I hadn't given them raises in five years, and to keep up with the trends of what's going on with the state guards and the guards in Rye and stuff like that, I gave them all wage increases, and I also added a sixth lifeguard so that I would have coverage on the days that lifeguards need days off or sick days or something like of that nature. And I did that at, toward the end of the season this year, and it worked out really good. So, so would you give them like 10 to 12 or 12 to 14? What was that? I think uh, most of them are 10 to 11 or 12. And, the head lifeguard is up to 14, I think that's what the others are paying. And remember, well. Diane, I am a lifeguard. Well, come on down and put your application in. <laughs> what is the I state also have my down? boots on. I think they pay 14 for the heads and 12.75 or something like that for the other lifeguards. I'm not positive on that, though, but I asked about it earlier this what year. What was your season this last year? What were you open? So Just before stretch. 4th of July, and we ended at uh, the week before the sea. We ended Labor Day weekend, and that was a sketch. I would like to have them out there in June because there are people out on the beaches. So where are the beaches now? Sun Valley and Place Cove. And what about the southern part of the Real Hampton Beach down by the jetty? We don't have any coverage there. <coughs> that's state, state. I think that's state. state. Yeah. It's a town beach. Down the only part of that beach, as I understand it. Well, I'm it's following rough. what the state used to do, and I put the guard okay, out. So you got Sun Valley and, and Place Cove. Yeah. Yeah. There were six lifeguards, right? Right. That's what I've budgeted for this year. You, and you, you, you used to have a problem pick getting lifeguards. You don't pay Jerry, do you? No. You used to have a... You have a no, you used getting to have eight a, bucks he, an he, hour. <laughs> you have to hire somebody to Can I pay you? <laughs> <laughs> No, but I mean, you used to have a problem with lifeguards, getting them. Yeah, you and that hasn't, well, this year was the first year I was able to get a good Is it because six. of the wage we're paying a little bit more? And Hard to say. Hard to say. I think everything's kind of cyclical, you are know. They, are, are they UNH students, so to speak, or? Two of them. One was um, a high school kid that was on the swim team, senior. One of them was a UNH kid that went to Winnicott High School. Two of them have graduated from college, Winnicott kids, and the other two are from Fort Smith. Okay. I'm not going with that question. Okay. So now I'm down to maintenance of parks. I don't know. Well, no questions. Okay. Only one question on, on the lifeguards. Mm -hmm. We don't have any overlapping still. We just have one out there at a time. No, we have three lifeguards at Place Cove and two at Sun Valley. At the same time? Yes. Because they have to have breaks, and Place Cove is actually quite large. Yep. It's all the way to the North Hampton yeah. line. And Sun Valley is the more dangerous of the two, so it's good to have two guards there at all times. And that's the reason I added this six person, because I can't tell you how many times over the past five years I've had one guard at each one, because mm -hmm. people were saying, I, I can't. I can't take it. It's nerve-wracking for me. <laughs> You're not comfortable. No. Yeah. Okay, yeah, if you were to lose a lifeguard for whatever reason, would you be able to replace them mid-season? I, what I would do would be call around to other places that have lifeguards and see if they have one that can work, you know, part-time for us. Because we have, we work 32 hours about, and so that's the way I would have to do it. Because most guards, at halfway through the season, they've got their jobs. They're do they're good. And the state pays for the lifeguards at Hampton Beach, or is yeah. that part of the reimbursement? No, no it's a that it doesn't a happen anymore. The reimbursement. Hmm? They, that was a long time ago. The state we used to reimburse the state, and they'd put lifeguards out. And the reason we ended up taking this over is they couldn't find guards. So that reimbursement is gone. They all report to their own parks, dread as they call it, right? Right. They, yeah. Right. Where are you going to go around the? the We're in the, yeah. yeah. We're done with the questions. We are all done with. Well, well, maintenance of parks is next. Yeah, the last one.
section. That's a different right. section. Yep. One so, question. You can yeah, we, we are going to go around. Okay. All right. I'm all done. Sonny, you have any more questions? Well, I've got, for any questions, I'm curious you? about the revenue that you generate because, you know, that would be a big factor. That's a big plus on your side, the more yeah. money you bring in. So. Yeah, I looked at the revenues actually today. Yeah, well, I see it's 3.1, 3,100 in November, I guess, so, on this handout. 3,100? <coughs> yeah. <laughs> She's that's up around 400,000 for, for parking. Yeah, that's no, the year. For parking. <laughs> this is <laughs> yeah, November. So. Oh, okay. oh, for parking. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well, that's what I'm talking about. 3,100. That's the main source of revenue. Yeah, it's 400,000, though. No. Ish. I understand that. Are you talking about the parking lots? Yeah. That money for November was we had four or five concerts at the casino, so we kept the Ashworth Ave parking lot open. That's where that money came from. And the total revenue that we generate from parking? Uh, we made 520000 this year. And in the uh, recreation department, uh, I just looked at the number today. It was like 190000 so you have one hundred ninety thousand dollars in revenue from in the your program. Revolving fund, yep. Unfortunately for her, if we looked at her department and everything she's responsible for, in terms of expenses and income, it would be like building department where we say you're paying for yourself, and all of this would be a mute point. Yeah. Just keep, just keep in the back of your head. She's she's responsible for it. And that's what comes in under the umbrella of all things service by the Recreation Department. So I think sometimes it's only fair that we look at it, um, even though we don't offset it in this section with the revenue, the revenue still comes in. It's still managed from this entity. So, Sonny, do you have anything else before well, we move to it. Michael? Yes, I have a couple points. Back to your comments about the, the rec department being responsible for everything, I think that one could say that all departments have a significant value, and I think they all deserve a lot of credit for doing their job. The police and the fire and public works is credit all over the place. In fact, there's been more than one remark made that public works takes care of everything that nobody else takes care of. So one could say that about almost every department in town. One could say that about all the managers, all the directors, all the, all, and go on, on right up to the town manager. So I think the pile on to the rec department is nice, but being fair to all the rest of the employees in town, I think we have to make sure that they all do a good job for the town of Hampton. But I do want to make a remark about the <clears throat> regular wages. I think that <clears throat> possibly you possibly do deserve a significant pay increase. I have no problem with that all by itself. But when you look at the public sector and you look at the CBA contracts with the town, when you're looking at a very low pay increases that a lot of people are getting in the community, in fact, I don't get any pay raises. What I get out of living here in Hampton is the enjoyment of your company. I don't make any extra money. So I think when we look at from that point of view that the cost of living is real low, the average increase for wages across the country is very low right now. That lotting on a 9 or 10 percent raise on anybody is totally out of line. So that's how I feel about that. Thank you. Fine. <coughs> Just to jump on to that, the cost of living raise this year was 1.75 percent. Um, however, I'm going against my own policies and say you deserve it. Thank you. Um, the one question I do, do have about the secretarial, so two part-time <laughs> people as opposed to one person, yeah. was this done to reduce benefits? I think so. In the beginning. I did, it, it happened a couple yep. years ago. What, what did it? Um, Oh, software and copier, are we, maybe this is more of a question for Fred, are we doing this as a group? I know the fire department, or was the police department needed a copier? Is there any way we can group this all together? 
and any of see the if we can get town hall use our copier right we do our own publicity that's why we needed it close to us but the software part of it that you're talking about is specific software for recreation programming just the software so what's the do you know what the software part of it is yeah it's called rec track it's for signing people up for programs and trips no, I was asking Pacific. what the cost was oh, for just for that. It's just a, ma a maintenance cost. It's 28 something. And the rest is for a copier? Yes. We have a copier agreement. It happens to be in our office, but like I said, anyone in town hall uses it. Okay. Yeah. Use whatever's working, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> we're the biggest yeah. user of it, but. That's all I have. Thank you. Diana on the copy, is that one we own or one we lease? Lease. We lease that? Okay. Does that include the cost of copies and toner? All right. You find that more economical? I know we had a couple of other de departments in here that hadn't looked into it. It but depends I, upon the department and their use. Right. Yeah. Um, I think if you have heavy use, it, you end up better with the rental based and, on. And that's what REC does. They have the, the main color copier for the town. Mm -hmm. Because of all the brochures they put out and the other things, and, and that's much more economical for the town to rent that one. A lot of the others, it's not simply because of no use, and it's not a color copy. Do you charge for copies? No, because only town employees use it. Okay. But there's no charge back to another department for using it. No, we had the old one set up to do that, but we never actually did it. So there are other departments who come in, use your copier. Your copier is in the budget, but their use of the copier is not in theirs. And her copier isn't working. She goes to their departments. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the way it works, I think. Yeah. No, I, I know it's the way it works, but it's it's hard to. We we've had multiple departments in here looking for new copies, so it's nice to know the use that. Mm. I know you used to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, and I think it, if we have a software, we it's have a easy software. enough. It's easy enough to do as a you know as a log. But I'm just just curious to see if it was being yeah. done. Thank you. I have no other sure, questions. You do. No questions. Nothing. No questions. Thank you for doing a good job. Uh, Diane, back to the line item, regular wages. I guess I want to ask, direct my question to the town manager or the finance director. Over as we've reviewed all of these budgets, we've seen an increase on, on that line item for other departments, and most 99% of it is for collective bargaining. What percent, or what, can you tell me what the overall percentage of increase in the wages for that line item for all the departments? The average increase for non-union employees in the past year, 1.25%. 1.25 for non-union, right. right? That includes everybody that's not in the collective bargaining agreement. Right. Now, the collective bargaining agreement, how much did that increase, roughly? Uh, I don't administer that, so. But they, 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 they vary because they, they, they negotiate it. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what the negotiations come out with, and then you have to go to town meeting and town meeting and approve it, how you folks mm -hmm. approve it. So uh, the average is more than given, that given to non union employees. I agree. <coughs> but a ballpark figure is it 5% or 6%? Or no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's 2 3%. On the Lifeguard season. You say now you go from the 4th of July to Labor Day. Right. But I have budgeted for them to go in June as well. You want to back it up before the 4th of July? Yeah. Are you going to go beyond Labor Day? Um, the only weekend that I would do that probably would be the um, Seafood Festival weekend. Well, I'm saying, is that projected that you would yep. right now? You That budgeted, also is bu already budgeted for. You've yeah. already budgeted in this budget to go back before the 4th of July mm -hmm. and more forward beyond Labor Day. Correct. All right. Uh, and as far as the increase of wages for the lifeguards, what are they getting an hour now, roughly? Um, the head lifeguard gets 12, the rest of them get 10. Is 
I think we went through this last year, Diane. Like a place like uh, uh, Water Country. How much do they pay up there? I honestly don't know what Water Country. I thought it was it's a lot. It's kind of a I different th animal because they're in the pool. No, but I understand. I thought that it was it a lot. Was, it was a lot higher. It was a lot. I mean, here they are confined to a pool, but they're getting more than yeah. what you guys are getting down there. Yeah, and I've again trying to keep the budget low, and right. but it's time. It was time to give those. You know, a few of them are returning. They should be getting a. a raise. Now, who pays for their training? They do. They do. They get certified uh, as lifeguards. They, right. They pay on their own. You become a lifeguard, and then you come to me and ask for a job. Oh, nice. Certification through the state? Yeah. Well, it's from through uh, Red Cross. Oh, the Red Cross. All right. YMCA. YMCA, yeah. Uh -huh. Until we get our recreation center pool. What's exactly. that? Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they pay for that on their own. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All set. All set, thank you. Okay. This question, while we're talking about the lifeguards, are there any different requirements for a state lifeguard as opposed to our own <laughs> place code or whatever? Or is it just well, once you're certified, you're certified? Yeah, we follow their same certifications. Um, and I agree that as, as what was mentioned about the 9% sounds high, but maybe we should look at things. I don't want to punish people for going years without a raise, mm -hmm. and then when it's mm -hmm. time to bring them up to where they should be, it, it raises people's eyebrows. Maybe we should look at what's been done over the previous three years or, or whatever. So I, I would be in favor of getting you closer to what the average would be. I, I think it's an extremely important function of the town, especially with you know the, the drug problems our youth are faced with right now. So um, I, I'd be in favor of that increase as well. Okay. That's all I had. I'm set. Diane, how many raises have you gotten over the last five or six years or seven years? I mean, you've got three raises. Two, I think. Two <laughs> raises for about 2% so, each? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, I was going to say seven years, I think. But seven years? Yeah. You got two raises? Two percent. What is it? One percent on the average. In fact, mm -hmm. one year was 0.85%. Mm -hmm. uh, say that again. Right. One year was 0.85 percent. That's how much money they had in the fund. It sounded like you said 28 percent. No, no, 0.85. 28 percent. I'd be on there with a gun. 0.8 percent. One, one year, and then about one and a half. One, one to one and a quarter percent of the most. Okay. Last one I saw was 2013, and it was only four percent. Now, was that? Both of those, Fred, were those raises or were those the merit increases? No, they were they were raises. There's, a, there's the raise. an appropriation account for merit raises, so-called. Um, everybody gets an evaluation, uh, but it's not the type of merit evaluation. We're, we're switching to a different type of merit evaluation this year. Um, what What's happened here is that there's about $14,000 in there for the all of the non-union employees, and they simply divide it up and, and give each one the same raise. So in some years it's 0.85 percent, like it was two years ago. The board had to turn around and add some money to it to make it one percent. So. What I'm saying is that where it came out of, out of that pool of money. It came out of that those dollars, that fourteen thousand right. dollars. Yeah. Right. But not as the position itself, just out of that pool of money. That was distributed amongst all the non-that's where all the raises come from. Right. I don't look at that the same. But any other questions? All right. We have a motion. We have a second. If you could repeat the number, Jim. Two hundred thirty-four thousand eighteen dollars. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? None. Unanimous. Moving on to the next thing. And move 33,202. Second. <coughs> All right, this is the maintenance section. So I had um, one question from that. It's in regard to grounds and fields. There's a 15% increase. And um, the major increase here is that every other year I add FIBAR, which is playground surfacing, to the budget. So every other year that fluctuates. Um, so 
Uh, what, what, what was it? Tie bar? Is it? Five bar. It's called five bar. It's playground surfacing. It's a specific wood chip that you use for playground surfacing. Oh, you mean know, Kate's Kingdom and yeah, all the playgrounds in town. And this, uh, the wood chips, they they kind of deflate a little bit over time, and of course, some gets washed away in days like yesterday and stuff like that. So um, I got to kind of, and it has to be a certain height to meet sta safety standards in your playground. So we've been pretty good about every other year we replenish the, the five bar. So that's the increase that you're actually seeing in that. And the, um, the reference to the door is, is a mistake on the left side of the budget. The, the money that was there is actually supposed to be in the five bar line due to a, some added cost for the product. Yeah, I saw that. Now, so does the... This wasn't updated correctly. So the door issue is a non-issue. The door issue is a non-issue. That's in a warrant article. <clears throat> now, does the wood chips have to be any certain kind of wood chips, or can we go down to the DPW and ask them to grind up some stuff for us? No, oh. oh, you don't want that. You end up with kicks. Really? Yeah. They're I've specific. seen that happen. People They're using specific. wood chips, uh, surplus wood chips in their garden and whatever, and then before you know Where it, you get your wood chips done. The garden is infested oh. with ticks. Uh, you can get them, different playground companies sell them. Also, I usually buy them from New England. Um, playground surfacing, they usually have the best price. There's another place we got them a, a few years ago, but it wasn't as good a quality and it didn't last quite as long. Notice that the chips are bigger. They're, they have more uh, area associated with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the major change there. All right, so the, the, the doors are out. Yeah. Okay. Outside of that, you're flat. So pretty much. <laughs> <coughs> Any questions by anybody going around? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Frank? Um, just on the electric, what do you predict to be the cost, or what's going to cost for the lights? Actually, they're more energy efficient. So hopefully that cost will go down. Okay. And they also can be programmed. So, again, hopefully they won't be left on later than they should be, and hopefully they'll go off before other people would like them to go off. So, right. <laughs> so that will hopefully save also. Okay. Thanks. I have one question. Mm -hmm. It seems like I remember from last year that there was a <coughs> kid's playground, kid's kingdom, mm -hmm. yeah. um, that the wood surfaces had to be refinished yeah and that was all done and it's and it's holding up pretty well pretty good I still that playground is 20 years old so it's time to start replacing that playground and I do have money in a warrant article to replace a few parts of it but truthfully it's uh, had a nice life yep. nothing lasts forever huh bye right. <laughs> okay any other so, questions Thirty-two, thirty-three thousand two hundred two. All those in favor? Unanimous. Maintenance of rec facilities. I move two thousand dollars. Second. That's flat. All those in. Is it, no, and I'll throw it out there. Does anybody <laughs> want to discuss it flat? No. Okay. Yeah, All those in favor? Thank you. Thanks, Di. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we've got one more. Yep, guess we're not. Parking lot? Well, let's move the total so that we're clean in this. Can I have a motion on the total? Total? Um, total rec, okay. 269,220. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous again. Okay. We'll go to the parking lot. What, not what page is the parking lot? 41. 41. 41. 41. 41. 41. 41. 41. 41. Parking Oh, yes. I mean...
quite a few minus signs there and zeros in terms of percent increases. Right. There's not any change really in the parking lots. And this Steady is the one that goes. brings in the bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, other general government is that what the figure yeah. we're doing? Okay. Yeah, that's what it is. Yes. Seventy-four thousand nine hundred four dollars. Se second. Seventy-four thousand. Seventy-four nine hundred four. Okay, with a only a, a two point two six percent yeah, increase. No, there's nothing there. Okay. Do you know what the percentage was of income in the parking lot? I know the amount. It was. Uh, Five hundred and twenty thousand and some change. And last year? Five hundred and twenty six thousand. This is the first year I have to say we didn't make more than the year before. Well that increase won't be hard to figure out. Yeah. Uh, okay. Talk yeah, to us. It'd be two fifty three, right, Diane? Then three fifty well, I still say we're getting a pretty good bang there for uh, what totally. we did. We didn't increase our rates much, so there must be more volume in there. Anytime we can spend 74 and get back half a million, I'm on board with that. Oh. You want to talk to us? There's really no changes in it. I mean, apparent, uh, I bulk all the employees in, and it kind of depends on how many employees I have each year or able to get each year to work. None of them work full-time. They're all part-time employees, including Victor. And um, so they, I think I just left them as they were this year. Mm -hmm. So probably next year I'll be looking for some raises for some that will be coming back because we adjusted them last year. Just make mental notes that, you know, some years we're in, some years we're out. This year we're in for the parking lots. Uh, I mean, for the playground next year, they won't be in there. This year there's nothing in there for the parking lot attendance, but next year maybe there will be. Right. Um, I remember you did that. Yeah. Going around the table, is there any questions in this section? Yes. How long is the lease on the Church Street lot? Um, until 2025? 2025. 2025? Oh. No, it's five years. Five years. Oh, it's five years renewal. Five years, it goes up a thousand dollars a year. That's what I thought. Automatically? <laughs> yeah. So when's it? Oh, when's it up again? 2020, I believe, it's up for renewal. Right, but it's a thousand dollars each year, is what he's telling you. Last year we paid seventeen thousand. This oh, year it was eighteen okay. thousand. Eleven. All right. Yeah. So are that's we, the increase there. How are we managing the rates? What Selectmen uh, deemed what we can spend, uh, what we can charge between, we charge between $5 and $20. And that's based on weather, events, and <coughs> who decides? And what everybody else on the beach is doing so that we can get them in our lot. <laughs> Do you try to stay with them or just under them? <coughs> we try and stay with them. We try and stay okay. with them. The private, like the precinct and ourselves are usually the same. Some of the private lots are a little bit higher. Thank you. All right. Any other? Last round for questions. No? Okay. Jim, if you could repeat the number one more time. $74,904. All those in favor? Unanimous again. Anna, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on down, man. I know you're not used to us going through that quickly. You know that, that alone. Yeah, they put it in the words. You know it. Yep. Yeah. Get the whole table to yourself. Right. Spread mess. Right. right. Let's see what page we're on. Thirty-five, Amanda. I don't know if you want. Again? Where were we? 35. Town again. But it does seem warm. Yeah, we're in and we're in Oops. Take one and pass it down. There's no sub. It's the missing. It's just the whole thing. Oops, here. Yeah, there's no sub line. Well, oh, no, there is. Well, I'm there sorry. is. On page 137. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. It looks like we have two sections here. First section total is on 137. Oh, how would it Move $635,788. Second. So the first thing I have to say is that our health care costs, the actual cost rather than the estimates we prepared in July, came in a lot lower than we than we needed, I mean, a lot lower than we estimated for. And so the first thing I'd like to do is reduce our administrative line by $19,234. I like that. Where was it again? Mm. Uh, $19,240? 34. 234. I hope we hear that from the town. I believe that you do. Sure. What was the amount again? I'm sorry. Already did it. 19,234, Mike. Thank you. You're welcome. Is what you going to do? So, is that the same company? It is. Okay, I got all of my information is through Christie, so I'm sure they've done okay. it on the town side. Yeah. That's amazing. So the handout that I sent around gives you new um, final numbers and also new percentages, just to uh, help you match it up. And it has the page number there on the left. Yes, 74, the, uh, administration subtotal, you were 635, right? Yes. And now we're 616. Where is that on the sheet? Page 137. No, I got 137. But where is it on the sheet? Where's 130? Reduced request. We're Two changing these, line. but Christy, we're going to depend on you to give us a total when we're done. Request a I got you. And then the subtotal will change as well right. to 616. So after you change that line, gentlemen, you'll want to go to 137. I'm on 137. All right, and you'll want to, want to change that total to 616554 before we go any further. Sure. Let me hand this over to Tim. The, the changes are right on that page. Here we are. Thank you. Let me move that new number. Yes, please. Move 617,500. Oh, 616,16. 616,5. 54. 54. 54. 54. Second. 54. Thank you. <laughs> I'll second it. Um, I don't think there should be any discussion about no. spending less, so all those in favor? What? Well, did you have discussion? Nope. I'll put, I'll. <laughs> Michael? What's that? All those in favor? Vote. Raise your hand. All those I'll. in favor of the reduction? Sure. Jerry, are you on board with us? I'm in favor of the reduction. Right. Yeah. Unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I raised my hand. I just want to make sure we've given everybody the opportunity to vote. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, that was a good opening. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. thank you for that. It makes a difference. Yeah. <laughs> so for questions under this area, the one question was, um, that our regular increase, regular wage is, is increasing by quite a lot, 12.7%. Mm -hmm. um, part of the reason for that is that a part-time position has been made full-time, and so where it looks like it's a very large jump, it's really the, the reduction of 10.49% in the part-time wages. It's really it's a person moving from part-time to full-time. Okay. Um, when you say that used has, has this already been done? Yes, it was a change that we needed to take um, into effect for um, the Affordable Care Act. She was someone that was either going to be cut in hours or we needed to make her full-time and we wanted to make that happen sooner rather than later so that we were in compliance. So that has happened. What did we pick up in fringe benefits as a result of it? She is not taking um, health care through the town of Hampton, so limited fringe benefits. Um, life insurance, retirement, but it's a, a small number compared to what we would have lost if we'd cut our hours. Do we know what it is, Chris? I have no. it. Less than 10,000, is that what you're saying? Less than 10,000. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Okay. I'm curious, Amanda, uh, how many full-time employees, how many part-time employees? There are seven full-time employees. Part-time. <laughs> about it. 
my fingers. Four, five, six, seven. Eight. And eight part-time employees. Yes. So the bulk of this percentage increase, the 12.7, is this move from? The bulk of it is. There are wage increases as well. I'm, I'm that's on your sheet, but I, I will discuss it with you. But the, but the majority of it is this one position moving from part-time to full-time. There is uh, also included 3.25% increases, um, and that's for all positions. Um, Two additional positions, the teen services librarian and the head of public services have a 1.75 um, market analysis raise. Um, they're being underpaid. And what are they again? Uh, it's teen services librarian and head. Team services. Yep. And On head the of, that sheet. of public services. Yeah. Okay. But it's teen as in teenager. Right? Teen as in teenager. And those positions of 1.25 and they are union and non-union. Everything is non-union. Everything is non-union. And you have a lot of uh, volunteer hours, right? We do indeed. Yeah, how many volunteers? I don't know the number of volunteers we currently have, Sonny. Are you in here too, Amanda? Three points. I am. But again, of the of the total jump, it's uh, right. with the with the reduction in health care, the library's budget is going up only by three thousand six hundred sixteen dollars. Yeah. So everything I'm asking you for is almost entirely being consumed by the health care savings. Anything else on this section? Uh, I, I I'll, go, I'll go around the table for questions. I'm going to start with you, Jim, on that set. side. Dave? I'm set. All set. Thank you, Amanda. All set. Thank you, Amanda. <clears throat> Tim? We converted one part time to a full time position. That's correct. And that was entirely inspired by Obamacare. It was a position that was full-time and cut to part-time two years ago. <coughs> it was a position that was struggling to get all of its, to have all of its duties met within that limited amount of hours. The new definition of what part-time was going from 35 hours to 30 was really going to be, it was going to put the nail in the coffin of that position. We, we couldn't lose it five hours. And so, yes, the Obamacare brought, brought that issue back for us. Sounds like it was the sole motivator. Well, it, other than, you know, because you didn't want to lose five hours, so you figured, well, I'll add five hours right. and go forward with that. But basically, the decision was inspired by Obamacare. Yes. So this is entirely an Obamacare cost, one could fairly say, whatever the cost might be. Because she's not claiming health benefits, and this, this, is, this and as I say, this is a particular employee, this year kind of a thing, um, it's a risk versus needs. It doesn't cost us, you're correct. But the change did not cost us much, and it, and it will be a risk to our budget in future years. Exactly. So there is a cost, and it's kind of uh, spread around. I see a 14.8% increase in New Hampshire retirement. Apparently, that's a, uh, an increase is significant relative to this upgrade because of the Obamacare inspiration. Well, that's what I heard you say earlier, unless I misunderstood you. The total increase to the New Hampshire retirement is 14.8 percent. Right. Uh, this particular person's component of that is only one-seventh of that number. Mm -hmm. She's not so the she's sole driver. So she's 2 percent of that. Then. Yes. So it would yes. have been 12, but now it's 14. Yes. And same is true for life insurance, which is up 16.33 percent. Likewise the same. And plus we have the exposure to health insurance going forward. When the year comes around, she decides to take health insurance from town, right? That's certainly true. Now our increase, uh, or I should say our decrease in your request is entirely inspired by health insurance reduction costs. Yes. Um, 
but that's all being consumed, you mentioned, by other increases. Right? Yes. So we still have a net increase in spite of the savings on the life insurance. Yes. Thank you. No further questions. I'm all set. Thank you. All set. How long has this employee been with us? The position that went from part time to full time? Mm -hmm. I want to say her first year was 2009. If that, if that individual was to vacate this position in the future, would you keep the full-time position or would you look <coughs> to perhaps redo the position? It's an excellent question. I think, I don't know that we know entirely until it happens. Um, this position is the second in, in command in the children's room. And so whenever the head of, the, of Children's Services is out or needs support from another employee, this is the position that takes control. She, you know, it, in, in the head's absence, we're talking about payroll and supervisory, um, you know, if there's conflicts or other things that need to be resolved, it's, it falls to this position. It's important enough that I think it should be full time. But if it happens mid-year when our budget's already in, we have very limited it, flexibility. So what... If we have to hire and we have no money, mm -hmm. we're going to... And maybe Amanda, I'm asking because I'm seeing some positions, some positions sometimes are vacated, others are created. Right. It's where are we going in the future? Yes. We, we have that position, situation with a couple of other positions in town. Certainly where maybe part-time versus full-time didn't play the kind of role it's playing now where some mm -hmm. people are being reduced. Yeah. In this situation, somebody is being increased. I know we don't have a crystal ball about right. what tomorrow is going to bring, but I guess I was trying to see what kind of substance the position itself has. It merits full time, absolutely. Okay, that answers my question. Thank you, Brian. Um, are the numbers for that full time position um, shown here for the benefits? The increased benefits for that position are in the budget that you're hey, running. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's it. Thank you. I have two questions. Um, I noticed that in the default budget, your <clears throat> line for the wages is exactly the same as what you're requesting for the 2015. Can you explain that? Some of, well, the position that changed already <laughs> in July is part of it. And uh, raises. Okay. They shouldn't be in there in the default budget. Unless you're misinterpreting the default uh, the budget law. <laughs> yes? No, I'm not. Um, they I mean, took effect. I, I was under the impression if they take effect before the end of this year, we're able to c carry them forward in the default. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you another question then along that line. This 3.5, is that a, a, pay, a, a pay increase plan? Payment no, 3.2, it is not. What is it? Um, what would you call it? Is it every year? No, excuse me. No. <coughs> um, the trust, we, the library previously had a step program. Okay. And that well, the steps were 2.5 each. Mm -hmm. um, the trustees have done away with that program. Okay. Their intention going forward is going to be to allot a pool of money, okay. you know, whatever it would, amount it would be, and for um, after the evaluation period each year goes through, that we would determine what amount any particular employee would receive. And how many years does this plan cover then? I mean, are you going to do that every year going that is That is the intention. I mean, let me ask you a question then. If you're going to give out 3.5 raises, 3.25 raises, uh, it seems to me that we're the voters never approve that in a budget, per se, and if it's in the default, they didn't approve that either. So it's an end run around the voters. All of our appropriation, I mean, it's, it's money that we had to spend. It was in our, an employee left, teen services librarian left November of 2013. Okay. Her, her salary and her human resource, you know, her benefits were in the 2014 budget. Okay. That, those funds were used to fix the, uh, the, um, the Children's Services Assistant Librarian position to full time. Okay. 
and then so towards the end of this year we're able to make these 3.25 percent increases now and have them effective next year and be, and this year we're in a default budget yes so where'd you get the money to pay for the 3.5 again 2.5 the the position that was vacated in november the budget was already set with her numbers in it okay and you didn't so the 3.25 didn't increase that uh, wasn't more than that item at all so the um just happens her rate of pay uh -huh. and the health care she was claiming are higher than the person who was hired and the health care they're claiming so there was a there was a say like a net x gain. dollars yes. and you spent that x dollars on 3.25 to spread around yes so that's this year i mean for 2014 so you won't plan to necessarily do the same thing again no, next year because no, you won't have won't. that pool of money. Right. Okay. Yes. I follow that. And I've got one more question. Okay. I know that the town uh, negotiated with the unions uh, over the years to contribute more towards the health insurance. I know when you were in before, you said that you were working on it. Now, what's are you working on that still? No. We, uh, the trustees feel that the 90-10 split is where they'd like to stay. Um, that is the benefit that employees had when they were hired they don't want to negotiate a lower benefit to them they feel like that would be the same as giving them a wage decrease well here's the same logic they'd have to say that to all the unions we have working for the town but the unions are separate employees working for separate people true but the taxpayers all pay for all of it sure they do yes they do so I mean my question is it seems like to me if we're making an effort collectively to reduce health costs for the taxpayers by negotiating and contracts that the library would be well behooved in doing the same thing i know that trustees don't work for the town i know all that it's a separate legal entity but their the bottom line is that taxpayers pay for it and i'm a taxpayer and i think it would be only right for us to all look at the health insurance for, with a very critical eye and encourage everybody to do the best we can for the taxpayers and you have no intentions of changing it then the trustees discussed it, reviewed it, looked at the union contracts. For the five employees that this affects, they feel that the 90-10 split is where they'd like to stay for now. Okay. okay is there one plan for your health insurance, Amanda, or do you? you do we are we sh we go through the town. Oh, you have this. We do we do use our uh, the town is able to um, represent us. You know the, the, the various yep. levels of exactly. health care yep. okay. uh, offerings by the insurance company. Yes. Sunny. Sunny. Oh, yeah. No, I. I know everybody loves the library. It's a jewel. It sparkles. You know what I mean? But one thing I've noticed over the years, you know, that I've raised with you many times, the percentage of wages and benefits against the total budget line. Mm -hmm. You know, went from 67, 68 percent. Now it's up to set almost 75 percent. A couple of years ago, we got we got a Warren article, you know, twenty-four, twenty-five thousand dollars. That brought the percentage down, but I see it's creeping up. You know, I see a lot of changes coming in the library. You know, most people are starting to use tablets, electronics. You know what I mean? How do you how do you control costs? Is really what I'm trying to to get at. Because you know. It's an $800,000 budget, or it's actually more than that, you know, and it keeps going wages and benefits, and, you know, eventually the, how, 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 sure. how, well, what, how you see the long-term future. I think it's unfair to say that it goes to wages and benefits every year. In the last five years, we've given two raises. So but the question came up earlier for Diana. It's not something where every single year you're seeing jumps in wages and benefits. Often it's it's not being increased, and then we also are working from default, so we're not increasing that way either. Um, the library is, in addition to the collection of the resources that we offer, it's the people that who who make the selection for the collections and who help people with their information. We also are doing a lot of programming. It's not just about checking books out or answering reference questions. It's being there to provide tablet instruction, do other things that people want to know about. Um, human resources is expensive. Having a lot of people on staff benefits us greatly. Um, I don't think you know, administrative side is 75. 
operating side is 25, you should cut that. I, th I don't think looking at it straight as a percentage is a helpful way to, to analyze the budget. But um, <coughs> we did uh, reduce a staff member. That was 2013. And that position's been eliminated. It won't come back. So an entire um, staff member, full-time position, is gone. We slimmed down how the um, adult portion of the library is supervised. Um, I don't see further reductions. Um, I guess that's right. gut shot future. Uh, how's the new lighting system and the new uh, burners, gas burners? They are still doing very well. So we don't have to pay a big maintenance fee every year for right. that? Right, yes. The, um, the, You're uh, paying a real big figure. Ten or, what was it, 10 or 15 or 20K? Higher. Yeah. Higher for a maintenance fee. Yes. Now yes. that's greatly reduced. Much greatly reduced. And the expense of running for electricity, a better lighting, right? Yep. I have that. I have it all charted out, actually, Jerry. And partly because I think the the source cost is going up again. We are going back yeah. up. Yeah. But overall, compared to what we were, you know, heating out the window basically before, yeah. <coughs> making a big difference. So, I mean, yeah. So I mean, I think there's big, a big improvement there. Yes. Go back to following up on that. Did, are we going to break even on that in the near future on that expenditure? We've got the the boiler we paid for outright. Uh -huh. The lighting and the chiller we paid through a zero finance loan. Yeah. And that's a ten year period that we have to pay it back. So. So you hopefully you're going to save enough in ten years to pay it off. Yes. Now, how does it look so far? I don't know. Oh, okay. I can look, but I don't know. No, that's okay. Uh, I got to be optimistic. I think we're on the maintenance, oh, on the maintenance fees alone, Mike. <laughs> Maybe not as much as we'd like, but it's got to be helping. Thank you. I think you guys are jumping ahead a little bit in that section. I want to go back to administration a little bit and just share a couple of thoughts with you, Amanda. You know, in a year when we end up with a default budget that's basically the taxpayers saying that they don't want to spend any more money but the way things are we have obligations that we're contracted for and we do have to run the town but I think that's what they tell us we're, we don't want any increases this is not just happening with the library it, it's happening in a lot of departments and I just want to point out a difference you have an employee who left. You had money left from, let's say, that pay line. And you've now given it as an increase to someone else. There is a difference in doing that than if you bought a piece of equipment, let's say. That would be a one-time purchase confined to that year. Because you are not only passing through an increase in that year that the vote has said we really don't want to see anything other than contractual increases. <coughs> but you're giving us that increase in years going forward. My problem is with that process that we are using in a gray area that is bumping up all of our costs and putting the taxpayer at arm's length to be able to do anything about it. Um, I really hope that this process stops because my phone has done nothing but ring off the hook about this mm -hmm. and I want to share it with the department heads, with the town manager, that this is highly regarded as not a good way to, to put through these increases. People are looking negatively on any increase and it's something that sooner or later will blow up in everybody's faces and you'll end up with situations where we have very good people who should get increases and don't because there'll be a backlash. I've seen it. It happens. It's going to happen. It's a prediction on my part. But this <coughs> is what's happening. If within a year you, you don't spend on something and something else is there that you can displace maybe from a year going forward. In other words, maybe a copy of broke Maybe you had $4,000 left on that line, and it might be a good thing out of this year's budget to buy the copy. That's not put forward next year. But with these increases, you are already burdening mm -hmm. the following year and the year after that and the year after that. 
And I guess I only have one question. You have a position that was increased in time and benefits now to full time. Will that position also be, bene be benefiting from the three point? Yes, so, that's how it's written. You know, in the whole thing, we have unions that we're saying on one side, and, and as you pointed out, that you were not under the unions, but you are under the town pocketbook. And I think that when we go to the negotiating table with unions, there has to be a fairness for everybody all the way around, union, non-union. You can't hold somebody in a union to a one point or oh, point two five one point two five, one point and a half increase and at the same time say give us benefits back in percentages. Maybe that's a decrease in the insurance. Then have other employees that are getting benefits by having not time taken away. And in your case you made the position full time. In the case of um, the welfare officer we took time away from her. Those, those aren't issues that individually we can do anything about here. But I think that I feel at this point, and I have to say something about this overall picture on how this is being done, mm. I am not for this, okay? I, I, I highly disapprove of this practice of putting, getting a raise into this year to float it into next year's default mm. budget. I agree. And it's, you're here, we have the opportunity and a little bit of time tonight for me to expound a little bit on that. It's not directed t totally to you. It's directed to anybody in any department who has done this. I think you've put, again, you put the taxpayer at arm's length, um, and that's part of the budget. Like I say, anything in the year for the year, but some of these races don't do that. They push it forward for as long as we have that person. And that's why, too, I'm asking you in this position going down the road, is this a position that would be altered? I did, on the positive side, I did hear you say, and I had forgotten, that you gave away a position when you needed the money. And so, to me, you're restoring a position that you previously had, perhaps. I mean, we forget that. We fight for every position we have in this town, and every time we lose one, we, do, we really do have to do battle to get one back. But it's in the way it's been done. I'll champion any time we have a deficit somewhere that we need to take care of. But I think I'm trying to echo the voices of a lot of people that I've heard to the process, oh, not only in your department, but this this goes for everybody in every department who's done this. So thank you for listening to me. Um, I'll, thank Tim. You. Uh, Amanda, I heard you mention uh, a 10-year interest-free loan on the Chilla financing. Yes. Um, I'm sure that's a good deal. Well, it sounds like one anyway. But uh, I'm curious about the approval process. <coughs> we, we put it forward as a warrant article in 2010. Yeah. Okay, so it's handled through the energy uh, energy committee. Yeah. Okay, uh, it was so a very good, very good payback. So the legislative body, that is, say, town meeting, has approved the beer warrant article. So everything yeah. is on the up and up. Oh yeah. And I thank you for that uh, sure. very clean process. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any other questions on this section? Okay, Sunny, another question. Oh, sorry, well, maybe on this we section. should wait till we get to to the next part. Okay. Yeah. All right. So on this section, can we? Review that number again. Was it six hundred and six hundred sixteen thousand five hundred fifty-four dollars? We already voted on it. Okay. Well, we voted for the change. Let's vote to accept it. Okay. For the amendment, yeah. Right. And all those in favor? That was the amendment. Opposed? This is for Joe. Okay, that's against. The final number. Uh, uh, administration. Yes. Okay, moving on to the next section. I uh, move page 141, I believe. Yep. 
three hundred forty four dollars. Second. <clears throat> I was looking at what you sent correctly. There were comments but no questions on this section. So right. To it. I mean, I, you know, if you have any comments on it. You want to restate your comments, Jerry? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at my comments here. Twelve. One forty-one. Yeah, my comments on page one forty-one. Oh, they're exactly the same. Uh, I'm looking at the appropriations. <clears throat> From 2011 through October of 14, and, and annualizing 14 to, to the end of the year, the historical actual spend rate has been 228,000 a year. The quest is for 212, 344. I can't argue with that, is what I said. The budget this year was for 212, 345, and the 214 annualized spend equals equals that. So it looks like we're in control here, is what I said. Oh. It's on page 141. Are you following me? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am. I'm, you know. I mean, the, to me, the spending looks like it's well under control in the appropriations area. Um, the rate at which we're spending reflects history, and it reflects the annualized rate this year. The only thing I don't see is, I, I see the accounting is different in this area. For the 2014 requested and the 2015 requested, but I'm not seeing a run of what has been expended. That would be in the uh, the November. I don't know. I didn't take a look at November's uh, library. That one's going to look odd. That's paid to the library in quarterly amounts. Uh -huh. And so at this point, we're fully expended. But it's just basically in March, we're a quarter spent. In June, we're 50% spent. It goes on that way. So right now, we're 100% spent, but it's just... That check has been transferred from the town accounts to the library accounts. Mm -hmm, sure. So, if you look at the November financials, what page? Yeah, uh, Chris. On the November financials, page fourteen. Got it. The appropriation line is at two hundred twelve thousand three hundred and forty-five dollars. No. Which matches the fourteen budget. Right. Because they received a fourth quarter payment, like Amanda was just saying. No. So it's not actuals; it's just a bulk payment. Correct. Well, okay. and what happens to the surplus? They get Surpluses by law are held by the library. They, they get the town has to expend 100 percent of the appropriation and give it to the library. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then let me ask this: What was last year's surplus? Surplus. Last year's surplus. If you don't have it on you, it's okay. The thirteenth one was well. We know what we well, spent. I don't want to know what thirteen was. I want to know what fourteen. Is that what you mean? I want to know what they ended up with. Fourteen. Thirteen goes back too far. We've had. Who we wouldn't have that? Well, we budgeted two twelve. The reason I'm asking is this is a, this is a section with utilities. No, that this is a section of all these periodicals, isn't it? It's Technical service. It says two twelve is. Uh, well, it's yeah. also electric. Um, it's gas. Yes. Yep. All of it. Yeah, it's all in there, and that's numbers that we don't have a final number for yet. That's that's why I'm asking, Amanda. If okay. you haven't been following the other departments, we know that some of these need to be adjusted one way or the other, and we're not sure yet. We haven't. We don't have any fixed numbers yet going into the new year. Yes. So some of these things are in flux. So I'm looking for what you've actually spent mm -hmm. to try to come to some sort of a rationale on where those numbers should be. Right. Dick DeRocher is on our board as an alternate, mm -hmm. so he's he's <laughs> he's, privy, he's helping with that too. Um, so we should be calling Dick. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> okay. He'll be happy to hear from us. He misses us. So I guess the okay, so that is sent to you, just so I know, that's sent to you in one bulk payment. Yes. And if someone can get to me, and I will distribute it to the rest of the committee, what we ended up in surplus from library last year. Okay. And do we have any sort of a projection? We're only really a couple of weeks away from the end of this year on what the possible surplus will be. I think we're going to spend very close this year. I think there's gonna, not going to be on the on the... On the administrative side, there may be more just because of the changes with the employee leaving. But on the on the 
what do you, you guys call it, the library main budget. On that side, yeah. I think we're going to spend, right? Well, you're 91.72% you're spent through November. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you get with, uh, Just wondering. So what, what happens to library surplus funds if we have money left over in India? Does that go back to the town, Fred? Nope. Well, they keep them. Where does it go? It's held by the, the trustees and the statute for their future expenses. Mm -hmm. Oh, so they can hold it over until next year. They can hold it over forever. Okay. Uh, that you. doesn't include wages. No. no. Her, her current spending annualizes out to <laughs> a little bit above the budgeted amount. Amanda, can you tell us how much is being held in trust right now? And the, top of my, the trustees have um, a Vanguard account with um, funds that were given primarily when the library was um, added to in 1985. Mm -hmm. That is somewhere in the neighborhood of $100,000. Um, okay, so we could ask Norm Silberdick tomorrow if he's going to be here. So that is two different pieces. It is? Yeah. Okay. So we're audited. Uh, the whole entire trustee um, accounts are in the town report every year. Okay. Who would I ask for that um, that question to now? Diane Crow is the current treasurer of the on the board of trustees. Okay. I, got no, one. I mean, for that matter, she they, we submit she submits a monthly report. Okay. okay. I got one more yeah. question. Oh, there seems to be some one confusion. One. I'd like to get cleared up first. Of okay, all. I'm going to go around again. Mike was well, we haven't gone around at all yet. I know. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Sunny, my turn. Okay, maybe I can clear up a lot, little bit of the confusion because we've had this discussion in the past about gross budgeting, which is disclosing all appropriated <coughs> money, non-appropriated money, all the revenues, right? Yes. Now, I'm looking at your November operating expense. Here, 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 here. Oh, let me find it. Yeah, okay. Your, your budget line for 2014 shows total expenses in 2014 of 256433 This is on the operating yes. side. You've got your non-appropriate, the citizens' account. Yes. You spent 17327 so far this year. Right? Your treasurer's report, uh, I've got that here too. There it is. And then the citizens' bank in the money market account has About fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars in it. Yeah. And your Vanguard accounts now that you've got an operating treasurer again and we're getting the reports. In uh, let's see, in October the total because it's in a few mutual funds, that's all the CDs that were hidden in different banks that I found and moved them all into Vanguard. That's $127,000 at this point. It's, you know, the problem I'm trying to get at, Amanda, is, you know, the town's got a lot of problems, all right? We're not, we've got roads that need to be resurfaced. You've got sidewalks that are breaking up. You've got wastewater treatment plant with upgrades. You know, there's a, there's a lot of demands on the money. The library's a, a jewel. Everybody loves it, but I mean, disclose all sources of revenue. I submit a gross budget every year. Where? Uh, the Where does it show up? So what? The town uses their formula for reporting it, which is in your books. They don't take my gross budget, but I do turn it in, Sonny. It's also audited. I'm not hiding anything. I'm submitting it. You have those? Is it submitted in the same format as all the other budgets? Everyone, all the departments submit their budgets in whichever format they choose. There's not a standard okay. format for I guess it's submitted to me. To put everybody in a more comfortable zone going forward, 
would it be possible to have <coughs> this budget conform line wise like all our other budgets if the trustees decide to vote that and make it exactly a, a mirror image of the town they can do that they have their own accounting system so our request and would libraries be libraries across the state generally use an accounting system i think they're pretty much all standard no. to the libraries but they, they're not necessarily standard to what the cities and towns use right actually, but we're talking no. uh, excuse me. actually fred I, i've raised this with the with the assistant terry knowles and a number of times and she insists that gross budgeting should be reported in the same format. She said well, somebody's going to be a whistleblower. I guess I'm a whistleblower. But there's no statutory requirement. Exactly. So we Certain could... That's, that's, we that's could no request. statutory requirement. You can't enforce it. Okay. Well, I'm going to make a suggestion that we request that the format follow the same format that the town uses so that it's, it's easier for us to follow and we're not working for multiple sheets. And I think that might solve some of this problem. All right, Jerry. Do you have anything? No, I. I Michael. I, I just have one question. When do you determine, or how is it determined, that you're going to spend some of your money out of your Vanguard or your? So rather than the budget itself. Sure. Um, two things that I'll say to that is one is that we have no other sources of money. So that if a tree fell on the roof and we needed to fix the library it would be the Vanguard money. We don't have anywhere else to go, anywhere else to, to pull from to fix catastrophes. Okay. Um, the, other, the other answer to that is that that money was given um, primarily with a goal to, to improving the library in a capital kind of a way. And so um, decisions about, you know, um, we refurbished the Dearborn Redden room, but we also want to do the New Hampshire room. That might be something where we're getting to the point that it's going to be, this is one of the two historic reading rooms. We might want to put a little bit of funds into that. We don't want to do a Warren article. We would look to this money possibly. But it is um, to the trustees for each instance that they want to spend it or not. Um, historically, they have not spent any money out of it. <coughs> well, it's the trustees of the library. Okay, it's the trustees of the library. Okay, thank you. Wasn't there something taken out of the chilies and the furnaces or anything? So, and that's, uh, uh, that speaks to Sonny's question. There are m many different ways that money is kept <coughs> for the library. One of them is the um, non-appropriated account. Any, any revenue the library generates is held in an account, um, income generating equipment, um, library cards that are purchased rather than um, granted because they're taxpayers, things like that. Um, for whatever reason, that money was coming in and not being spent for quite a long time, and so there was a large amount in that, which is not the intent of that that account. Um, we decided that it would be time to spend that money, so we spent the non-appropriated account to pay for the children. I don't. Yeah. I know you. I know you made a contribution. Yeah. So we did. That was. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask a question here. Sonny, I want to go around the table in <coughs> fairness to everybody else. <laughs> I'm all set on it. I've already said enough, Mike. Michael? I'm all set. Stephen? Just one question. Um, you, skip <laughs> you mentioned um, <laughs> if a tree falls on the roof, then you'd use the money from the van. Mm -hmm. Don't you have insurance? We do. <laughs> we do. Okay, so. After that. <laughs> and, well, th the last time we needed insurance when the library flooded in. I remember that. 2012. Um, we, we had to pay for it first and then get reimbursed after, and of course you're deductible, so we do still need the money to make the payments. I yeah. want to make sure you have insurance. Yes, we do, and actually that's another thing where we're able to pull our resources with the town. I'm sorry, Brian. <clears throat> the only question I have is um, you're almost over on sick leave wages. Yes. That is um, the substitute librarians. And it's something that we can, obviously, if someone is sick, you want to be able to replace them with a substitute. Where we're almost spent, I've told them not to do that. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Basically. No, well, so um, I could fill in at the front <coughs> desk. I, I draw no additional wages to do that. We don't call in a substitute. The desk gets covered. Okay, so that was my point. That's where we are calling now. people in? Yes, we are currently not calling people in. We're holding it tight and steady until the end of the year. That's it. Thank you. And hope nobody gets sick. Tim. Yes, the uh, account on page 141 
suffix 680. Should be easy to find. It's the only one there. That is uh, $212,344. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the detail sheet next to it. Mm -hmm. And this seems to be all dedicated to a teenager stuff. Is that true? No. That's only a, it's a fraction of. <coughs> so it's not just on page 142 that constitutes no, that number? No, it begins. 138. 48. Okay, so we got a running total of a bunch of stuff in here. Yes. And this is what you were referring to, Madam Chair, about a common format of the budget? <laughs> okay. I was looking at it in a common way. <laughs> and I should be looking at it in a special way. Uh, but I am curious why we have, we do have a number of teen services here. Um, I don't see any infant services. I don't see any Children. young adult services or old age so, services. So um, I'm curious why the discrimination. <laughs> um, what you'll see on 138 is administrative, and that's um, utilities. That's contract. No, no, I got that part. Uh, yeah. So um, there is a 140. Section. 140 is no, public services. Infant. That's everything for Children. adults. They're not reading yet. And then. Uh, I have children's wherever it's going to. Children's oh, yeah. children's is, what is the, the bottom of 140. And then you have teen and technical services on 142. Right. So they're all there. Except Adults, the children, and teens. Except old people like me. We're excluded. You're an adult. You're an adult. That's the thing. Well, we're doing age stuff until you get to be an adult, and I guess then age doesn't matter anymore. Right? No, you become Let us know when like you me. get to be an adult. I'll let you know that, yeah. Do you have any more questions? I do. They're actually better than the one I just formulated, I think. Because I'm confused about the surplus money. <coughs> the surplus, yeah. first of all, let me start at the beginning. I heard that the town gives you a contribution, right? Every year, one one time payment. It's four times, but yes. Yeah. It's four times? Yes. Okay. Each quarter. And how is that calculated? How is it? Whatever is approved by the voters is divided by four. <laughs> Now, Tim. That's simple yeah. enough, right? You know that. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> you know. So this is this is an appropriation that's coming up from where? It comes from the uh, finance department. Is it the warrant article? No. No, no, I'm, no it's no, the budget. It's the budget. It's the budget. It's the budget. Right. It's the the <laughs> so that's this, that's this line <laughs> item that suffix 680 on page yes. 141. So we put this line in here. And the town gives you payments quarterly on this, apparently. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Now and the town pays the salaries, so. though. Yeah. Continue. Continue. Go ahead. Well, that's that's a, that's kind of noteworthy. You want to say that again, Sonny? <laughs> I mean, no. the payroll cool. gets done no. from no. the town. Okay. Be here the uh, appropriation of $212,344, which is on this line, that mm -hmm. if there is a surplus, that is to say you don't spend all that money, mm -hmm. that goes and stays with the library, right? Yes. Okay. We just went over that. Yeah, I'm formulating my question. So who holds that money? The Board of Trustees. The Board of Trustees do. And that is separate from, you have a trust fund at the trust, these of the trust fund. That's separate from that, right? It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in both cases, the trustees have total control of, a, you know, disbursements from either one of those funds, right? The excess surplus as well as the trust fund there itself. There are four trusts mm -hmm. held th that are administered by the trustees of the trust fund, and those must adhere to the investment rules of the, the trustees of the trust funds have established. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the surplus is accumulated by the library and it's administered in, in the custody is in that of the library trustees. Yes. Not the trustees of the trust fund. Correct. Thank you. I have no further questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. Richard. I'm a little puzzled, Amanda. If I'm looking at page 138, okay. when I look at some of the figures here, $24 for bank fees? $2 a month. I noticed. <laughs> well, why, is, yeah. why is there so many, the other uh, departments 
Their fees are so much higher. I, I don't understand that. Men to shops around. They have a treasurer that actually uh, is a good consumer. Well, then I go further down on their maintenance. Ten dollars for floors. That has <laughs> been done. <laughs> I, I don't. I, yeah, yeah. Those are um, those are lines that we did not want to remove, but that we don't want to fund at this time. And so we've put in a, a, a so instead of a dollar you have ten yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, all right so as we go down the line it would be i uh, they guess the contingency yeah, contingency floors, the floors landscaping the landscaping and, windows. and the windows correct so how is this work done does it come under this cleaning portion of your budget or when there is a surplus um that is often held in contingency so that when we have a flood or when we have some other major issue we can we will draw from that from last year's surplus for that um the floors have not been cleaned in many years we've had <laughs> volunteers do the landscaping um and actually like, you know we probably could remove so it's just a matter of having that line item staying within the system right yes. rather than an actual expenditure of ten dollars i couldn't understand that way <laughs> And again, I don't understand how the bank fees are only twenty-four dollars when everybody else comes in front of us here and tells us how much the banks are charging them for. Well, I guess it's, you're a good shopper, I guess. Yeah. Uh, that's all. All right, thank you. We should challenge those was, who are not. A yeah. Couple, a couple of years ago, you came before us, and your cleaning budget went up that high. Was last year. Yes. How is that? How is that working? So it was cleaning and maintenance. Yep. And um, we ended up in a default, and I cut the maintenance entirely. So we've got cleaning and no maintenance. Okay, and then um, 140 in your uh, your office, you get 10.5 in that. What what does that include? Is that your printers, paper? Office supplies. So that that is. Um, Just it's says office. It's, so. it's paper. It's not toner. We have we for whatever that's under technical services, but. Um, Library supplies, like the we cover the books in the mylar, mm -hmm. all the stamps, all of the stickers that go on a book. So that's in there. Um, pens, paper, highlighters, all that good stuff. Awesome. Okay. I only have one question. Going back to um, the cleaning and maintenance. Mm -hmm. You say you eliminated the maintenance, but the money that you had in maintenance went towards cleaning. So, so the cleaning the, line actually is elevated. The budget request was, I'm not going to remember, but it was high yeah, it was for both a, a maintenance contract and a cleaning contract. I think it was thirty some dollars. We ended up with the default budget. Mm -hmm. um, with what we had in the default, we were able to pay for the cleaning contract, but not the maintenance contract, and that was cut completely. And I, I have not pursued renewing that. Okay. And out of curiosity, the copy that you have, your copy is leased or owned? Neither. Neither. <laughs> Neither. Um, we have an unusual circumstance where the company basically provides them as vending machines. They they may. They maintain ownership of them, but they also provide all the all of the, the supplies, handiwork, and all, I mean all the you know maintenance. maintenance and the supplies, and they take all the funds. So they're sitting there, at no cost to us, provide a service to the patrons, and at no benefit to us. No, we get no income. But you get no expense out of it. No either. expense. Yes, that um, their business is not doing as well as I would have liked. They, it was a great solution a few years ago, and now it's less so. Yeah. Well, who pays for the paper? They, they do. do. They do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they Ten cents a copy. Put a diamond. Ten cents a copy. Yes. All right. I was just curious about that. Do we have any other questions on this section, gentlemen? Yeah. I've got a couple of questions. Okay, son. Cool. I notice you've got a, an item called, and your operating side called a contingency. Yes. And it's showing up in your 2014 budget as. Forty-two thousand seven eighty-three. What? What is it? So that is um, surplus from twenty thirteen, and that's another 
instance where we lost an employee. So that's a much higher surplus than in normal years. No, the surplus included salary. I, the town doesn't <laughs> request it back, but you know, it was sixteen thousand dollars in salary. Okay. All right, that's what it is. I, you know, I never see. I don't see a contingency line in, in the other departments. That's why. All right, right. but they have falling under the selectmen. They have other mechanisms of finding yeah. emergency you know, money. Uh, uh, it seems the library, well, you've got your own accounting system all of it. So. Contingencies are allowed under the law and all, all the property budgets attached. Uh, but there's no contingency in, 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 in the book it here. Is. Mr. Rainier was asking about it. It's, it's the one that's held open at $10. Ten bucks. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Rich, okay. Clear. Okay. okay. It's not going to make a holding. All right. All right. Um, <coughs> the amount on this section was 200 $12,344. All those in favor of that amount? Opposed? <coughs> no abstentions. All right, I think we have to adjust that final figure. Do you have that, Christy? It's um, $828,898. $898? $899. Okay. Oh, is it 99 or 98? 828899. That's 828899. Okay. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $828,899. $
we're looking at uh, 4125. I'm requesting this. In the last 10 years, the amount of staff development I've had is virtually zero. I haven't been able to get out, take time away from work. I've even tried going on vacation and been called back. I needed to get a tech up and running quickly uh, after Chris left. And, and for, you know, for an emergency. Um, so I had to spend that money up front, get him workstation qualified, get him to the basics on our systems, and walk away from him for a little bit. So that way I could have a little peace of mind. Um, IT is constantly changing. It's growing. I can't tell you in five years whether it will be Linux, Macs, IBMs, or a combination of all of them. I have to turn around and ha plan for the future. Right now it's wide open. We can't tell which way it's going to go. How many people make up the uh, regular wage line? Two. 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 Um, so that's pretty much the whole thing there. Equipment maintenance. Three years at 2011, 2012. This, this has been 16,190, 15,665, and 20,87. Uh, it's steadily growing. At about four years ago, we were asked to dummy down our, our, our specs. We're seeing the pain of that. PCs, home PCs, are actually only engineered to run three years. Most of our machines in the fire department, public works, we have quite a few that run 24-7. We can't shut them down. And then sometimes, in order for me to take them out of maintenance, there's a lot of ginning around we have to do. And actually, these machines save cut on overtime. So we have to replace them at five years. We carry two years of maintenance past their life. And that generally means a monitor, hard drives, RAM. And some of the environments that we're in are corrosive in wastewater treatment plant. So I'm constantly fighting maintenance on this stuff. Uh, is your equipment old? <coughs> Only within reason. We follow at 25%. Uh, four years, we will replace 25% of the fleet. The fifth year, we are going to replace the domain controllers, and that will also include our server licenses and our client licenses. And so that works out so that it's pretty much flat budget. I'm not in here all the time asking for increases, you know, where I go three years with nothing, and then fourth year I have to spend a lot of money to get things caught up. Generally, we run ahead of this curve, just ahead of the curve. Um, I'm looking at 2020 being off of seven, which will be just in time for end of life. So there's this, this a little, lot of planning that goes on here. Uh, so that we don't get caught with high increases from time to time. Are we performing preventative maintenance where it may not have been performed before? We're always performing ma maintenance. Uh, I wake up in the morning, the first thing I get in my email is, uh, uh, in my email is uh, what happened over the night, what's been installed, what's come in through the Internet, and then I have to turn around and try to remove some of this stuff. Uh, we run on least privilege. So if you sit down at the machine, you can't do whatever you want, but there are exploits out there that get around that. We deal with it. Uh, I get a second report that tells me what my hard drive utilization is, and it really goes off at 5, 10, and 15 percent of free space. That's where I'm going to, you know, what's going on here, what do I need to do to clean this out. I will get a, a report of all jobs open over the last 24 hours and in a job where we're closed so that way I get a good idea what Dylan's doing because I may not see Dylan the entire day but I have a good idea of where we're going and how we're, what we're doing and where we need to look at uh, are, are replacement costs rising yes that's pretty simple in the line item replacement equipment is flat how do you reconcile the rise in maintenance? Well, I pretty much said that earlier. Uh, since we dummied them down, we're going to have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. That's it.
And I'll just point out between those four accounts where you see some of the high increases of 400% and the negative 53, if you add up the 2014 budgeted amounts for those four lines, it's 81,800. If you add up the 2015 requested amounts, the OS amount, admin amount, it's 81,800. We've been trying to, Mike, <coughs> this, he's been trying to get the accounts in line with where the money's being spent. But since we keep going to a default budget, those lines keep, keep reverting back. And Mike has reported on that month after month, and I have continued to do the same thing. So in the end, Paul is asking for, between those four accounts, he's asking for a flat budget from 14 to 15. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, 4,000 more um, in those four accounts. Well, I've got one question for you on the, um, on the training. Yes, we have. Are there any pro? Uh, is that an amount built in of what could be, or are there specific training programs? With specific one class can run $2,500. One class. One class. And then that's basically from anywhere from three to five days long. Okay. I mean, I'm just, I guess what I'm asking is is there a specific lineup that you would want to see on that training? Well, with Dylan, we have him set up. And, and I would like some of the same. Um, we have online courses that we can attend, both led and uh, pre-recorded. Mm -hmm. And then we have access to a huge library of, of um, networking uh, documentation, uh, textbooks, basically, mm -hmm. on different software programs and, and things that are going on, whether it's Linux or it's that's like a could be situation depending on how much you have to spend yeah I guess what I'm asking is that if you could do you have an outline of things that you would want to definitely accomplish in the next year and what that would cost it's crossed out. I was looking to see if we could get at least two of these classes and that's what two of these slots would cost us it would be five thousand dollars Twenty-five hundred each. Is that one you would attend, or one that would be online? We most of it, all of it, would be done down here. Down here. Yes. Then that way we can avoid uh, the hotel or a hotel and travel and meals. Uh, with Dylan, I may I give him time to you take his courses during the week. Generally, he has a period of two hours on Tuesday and Thursday, and that can be shifted depending on what's going on. And how long do those courses run? <sighs> They didn't go from six to eight weeks. Okay. Just so that I'm clear, we've moved him to a full-time position. Good question. We hired him as a full-time position. Hasn't been done yet. Has been. It yeah, hasn't yes. been done. He's been He's done last year. He is full-time. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That, that, yeah. And, we'll be, and with the training, we would be using some of that time for training for yes. a six to eight-week period. Thank but we, we're flexible on that because what we can do, we do. Uh -huh. uh, generally, when I go home at night, it's my reading period because I can't do it here. Uh, so generally, whatever I have to do, I just have to sit at home and do it. Mm -hmm. It's just no peace to sit down and digest a, a good tech manual. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, un I understand the training and I understand the need to free you up, but if we're doing this two at the same time, freeing you up or not freeing you up if he's taking a course during that time. So we're paying for the course and we're also paying for the extra manpower, the way I see during that period. It's just a question that I want to clarify in my head. Uh, I'm going to start over here. Jim, do you have? Yeah, uh, I mean, I agree with you 100%. But technology changes every second. <laughs> And yeah. You have to stay up with it, and you have to keep your equipment up with it and stuff. And I think I think it's a good deal that you guys are able to do your training here without doing the traveling and stuff. So I, I think it's I think it's very good. Let me ask you this: If you took the course someplace else, if you actually went to that place, how long would that course be? Five days, three to five days. So five days versus a lot of these courses, I have to go to Car South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia. Um, some are held in Boston. Um, there won't be any north. There will be very few in New Hampshire. Uh, some would be even out in California, depending on the subject matter. So where'd you go this year? I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> Here. 
Uh, uh, that was Dylan's course. Actual was two nine nine zero. Yeah, that's Dylan's. He was here the whole time. Oh, so did he take it online? Or? Yes, he took it online. What I think people don't understand about IT training, right? It's much, virtually all of it is available online. Some of it you pay for, much of it you don't have to, okay? And, uh, you know, it's a very dynamic field. So, you know, the training that is produced is also dynamic. And thus it's delivered primarily on the in Internet, right? Yes. Well, so, you know, tr run the idea of the old-fashioned, well, what in software world we call the old-fashioned route of flying here and flying there to sit in a classroom is, you know, yeah. ancient history to us. So what, what was the course name you took out of curiosity? He did um, desktop, um, Windows um, 7 <coughs> desktop uh, support and uh, repair. Dave? Nothing. Uh, just one quick question. Any estimate on the number of workstations the town owns? There is 105 workstations, 11 servers. Um, surprise, you only have one additional employee. That's no. That's a lot of work. Okay, yeah, but um, we turn around, we run 24-7. No, I'm saying is yeah. I think you should need more. Oh. <laughs> Based on my experience, yeah. having one additional person besides the director for 100 units is quite remarkable, quite remarkable. Joe? Nope, I'm all set. Bridget? Tim, you seem to be quite an advocate for training, but then I look <laughs> and see here that the Board of Selectmen decreased you your, too. that line item. How are you going to accomplish your training? Well, you know, yeah. I have to do what they tell me. We'll salute smartly and we'll walk on. <laughs> Yes, sir. May I have more? <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Tim? Yes, I have some questions. Uh, the, uh, I noticed that you spend some percentage of your time dealing with Channel 22. Yes. Could you uh, give me a, could you speak to that in general, please? Uh, Any time I spend during the day on Channel 22, I bill channel 22 on my time card. I mark it off as time as channel 22. It's withdrawn from channel 22's funds, and we move on. Okay, so that that account action, Christine, how would, how would that be visible to us? It would be in the wages for fund 25. Revolver should be right on here. So it's not actually going to be seen in this budget book, right? No. But in your monthly reports that you get, you get a report for Fund 25, and it's in there. Yep, uh, cable committee that. revolver. They got a balance of fifty-eight thousand six forty-eight four sixty-eight. Now my time doing slides is always done after seven o'clock at night from home. And in, in the IT field, time of day doesn't mean a damn thing, does it? I understand, but that's volunteer time then. Yeah. Well, if you're doing volunteer work, that's fine. Yeah. But if, you, if you're doing work that you're getting paid for, mm -hmm. uh, this is an accounting visibility thing, which you haven't been paying attention. It's kind of a theme with me this year. Because I'm seeing things or not seeing things that I think we should be given some visibility mm -hmm. to in a more uh, useful manner. And I think this is an example. You do bill the cable TV fund. And uh, that, that's not clearly visible to us as much as it could be, and that's basically the point I'm highlighting. Now, it's not a criticism. Yes. Okay? Well, it's apart from the budget, Tim. <coughs> so it won't be. Well, you see, his pay is in the budget. Now, his pay is being credited, is what I just heard, from the cha Channel 22 fund. So some this, of it. Yeah. Some of it. So this number is, of course, somewhat skewed as a consequence of that. Mm -hmm. yes. that's, what is that skewing? That's not visible to us. Uh, does it show up at all as a uh, credit to the 025 fund? Well, it's just there? another accounting visibility thing that we need to address, you know, Christine going forward. Christine, yeah. she just started in her job right. this year, so we got to give her some space to, to, you know, she's to get her her feet uh, firmly on the ground and and make the improvements. Much like Mike, he took some time to get his feet on the ground and then subsequently make improvements. We need to give her the same grace. But at the same time, we need to recognize we need to move forward by getting better in general. And I don't want to make a big speech out of it. It wasn't my plan. I just wanted to highlight this as one of the visibility issues that I, that I speak about. 
Now, I heard someone refer to you as a director, but from what I understand, your job title uh, no, is engineer. No, I'm not a director. I work for Christie for, fi for Finance. Right, and your job title is engineer, right? Yes. Like that? Okay. Um, the, uh, I had heard, and I'd like you to tell me it's not true, or whether it's true, that you shut off all email to, to uh, Yahoo? No, I didn't. Okay, so that's not true. I am passing email to Yahoo. What you did, what what is happening is that Yahoo does not manage its free ma mail servers to the same level of the pay for mail servers I'm on. And if they are caught, or AOL is caught, or if um, MSN's caught, uh, distributing spam. They are sh the mail server is shut down for 72 hours. Now, if you have a free email account, those are where the, the targets are from. It is solvable by buying and spending, I think it's $25 every six months for a pay for account. So it's your your email service, the email service that you manage. The email service I'm using to blo to to eliminate spam from the network is what shuts it down, shuts down the communication. It's a blacklist service. Seventy two hours sounds more like gray list, but that's that's. Uh, well, they they well, seventy two hours. A lot of people complain, and Yahoo just if you can't find a number to call Yahoo. For a free mail account. So you're actually paying someone to filter the email. Yeah, you know, I'm spam, using a free service because there's three um, three mm -hmm. free services out there that I can tax mm -hmm. and use, to, yeah, and take advantage of. But I pay for a per megabyte of spam I report to uh, Spam Cop. Mm -hmm. And that it also allows me to use Spam Cop as a mail filter too. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I, I know you spend a lot of time dealing with spam issues and, and the like. Uh, yes. And uh, I noticed that when I look at SAU 90, Jerry, yep. uh, I see that now for a couple of years you've been employing Office 365, which is a cloud-based uh, email service, as well as offering Office in general, uh, at a pure seat cost. And so there is absolutely no cost at all in managing sperm because it's all handled by Microsoft entirely. There's no charge of any kind well, other for than the, the per seat there cost. is no charge because they get that service for free. No, no. Embedded yep, uh, in yeah. the Office 365 fee, regardless of who you are, even an individual, uh, there's this tiny fee for, for having Office 365. Mm. It's like 10 bucks a seat or something like that. Mm, it's $15 a seat. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, you get all the Microsoft Office products as well as email. And that includes taking care of email spam and all that <coughs> other garbage. Yes. Which to me would seem like something that would be worthy of consideration given the amount of time and problems that we're having with our own. Uh, I mean, let's be fair. Office 365 right. is a cloud-based solution that didn't exist yes. until just a couple of years ago. Yes. So what we're doing is we're still using the same techniques that were used a couple decades ago. And maybe it's time to reconsider that strategy, and that's all I'm suggesting. And I have looked at the pricing. At some point, I will need to move to that. Mm. But my software costs are going to increase by a factor of four Well, for Office. Uh, right now, it's costing me $400 for five years of Office. Um, it will go to uh, 15 times, that's 150, and another 30 is 180 a year. So roughly, it'll be it'll be $1,000 for five years. Yeah, as you know, the, the yeah. cost of software is a lot more complicated than Yes, it is. And then that's that. per seat. And yeah. I have to do per user. And if we increase by a part time. Because right user, now, when you I buy PCs, you're actually year. buying a fresh copy of Office and all that other right stuff. Right now, I so buy a copy of Office while I still Right, do. which just can be saved if you have Office 365. You don't yeah. buy that. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of yeah. variations in here. But clearly, if we're spending so much time dealing with email spam, having to shut down Yahoo, people, I don't. I don't have to uh, do it. It's all automatic. Well, I mean, uh, Yahoo doesn't get shut down on Office 365. Jerry, are you experiencing any issue over an SAU 90 relative to uh, email spam since you've employed uh, Office 365? But I, I'm aware of. It hasn't come up at all, has it? It's a non-issue, right? That's the point. Yeah. 
With that, Madam Chair, I don't want to get into the details that I could, and Paul and I would enjoy in discussing, but we bore the rest of the planet, so I'll just <laughs> move on. Hi, Paul. Yes, sir. I think that um, it's an interesting thing that the cave behind that door, is it pretty much the same as when I saw it yes. a couple of years ago? I think that anybody sitting at this uh, <laughs> table that hasn't been behind that door would be um, it, it certainly is an adventure to go in there and see the, the uh, it's a cave. It's actually, there's actually four caves. <laughs> four caves, they're tunnels. <laughs> no, no, in different buildings. <laughs> oh, okay, in different buildings. It's pretty scary stuff. Anyway, thank you, Paul. I have thank no you. questions for you. No questions. I, just following up on Tim's point, I think it's safe to say it's a very small number of investment to change down the road um, to um, Microsoft Office 360. If that's maybe there'll be another vehicle. I think the bigger issue is access, so that somebody is not shut out. So that for basically pennies on a $27 million budget, um, we don't have people like like that have access issues. Um, so that would make it a service enhancement. That's all I wanted to add to In that. In some respects, you know, it's, it's like the training thing, you know. For a long time, you know, IT was subjected to the same ritual of fly somewhere, sit in a classroom for a week. Mm. Uh, we no longer do that. I mean, we've, we've transcended that. And it's the same with cloud-based services, Office 365 being one example of that, in which services can actually be dramatically reduced in cost and increase in functionality simultaneously. Just like mm -hmm. going to school online is actually more effective for the student generally, because you can keep hitting that rewind button 90 times if you need to grasp that concept that's difficult. You can't do that in a classroom, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, we're talking about uh, kind of a different animal than we're normally used to when you're speaking in the IT world. It's very dynamic. I don't go there, so. Well, I do, and I love it, and, and, and so. <laughs> I could speak on for we'll forever on, on it, so I'll just shut up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Brian. <coughs> um, under the supplies and expenses, um, I'm a little confused about the, um, and maybe you can help me with, with licenses. Um, every department seems to have money for licenses. Is there one central? That's more or less my supplies and expenses on my renewals and whatnot. So uh, the new equipment has been generally been bringing in with a new office with it, so that's where that that goes. Um, when I did my uh, new purchases for my servers this year for the domain controllers and the licensing, that all went under new equipment or replacement equipment. All right. So this is just for you and no others. Oh, that's just my um. stuff. The, each I can't tell a department what to do or what to use. It's up to the directors to figure out what software they want, and then they they absorb the cost okay. of that software. So the the fi uh, finance department is settled on IMIS, the town clerk is settled on Clerk Works, uh, Facts joined in with IMIS, and you know vision and assessing. So there's a multitude of different packages. Now you doing their equipment cost as well. I'm doing their equipment costs. I, I try to factor that into my replacement cost. The only one I, that's too specialized for me that, to do the equipment cost for is the, the SCADAs on uh, Public Works because they, it's, it's easier for me to have their vendor, SCADA vendor, go out, spec out the equipment, deliver it, configure it than it is for me to buy a piece of equipment, send it to him, and then find out he forgot to say something about it. <coughs> A, a video refresh rate or um, a DPI setting that, that may be incompatible with his stuff. No, you don't do PD or you don't do the, and you don't do the library. You're right. They have four techs in the PD. Uh, the PD has access to an FBI database that I do not have the, the ability to access. And how many does the library have or do they do you know? They have their own technicians. It's an entire different world over there. Two. 
Yeah, it's an, it, they're an entire different world over there and they're set up for public access. The where I don't think there should be public access. Right, schools are separate also. Schools are a state entity. Yeah. And I guess the, I gotta ask the question anyway. Um, you have an open PO for new equipment. Yes. Replacement equipment, I should say. Um, is that just general computer? Is this, this what you're talking about? Yes, that's, that's where, it, windows, that's uh, where it's gone into. Okay. Thanks. Michael? Uh, yeah, uh, back to the email thing. Uh, we uh, Did you get the list and we can get me fixed? I haven't seen the list yet. Um, I sent her an answer back, I think, within minutes of uh, you sending it to me. Yeah. My, well, publicly, Michael is the only one here that would like to be set okay. up. Okay. No problem. I'm the only one that uses Yahoo. Because okay. I've no, had it, I've had it since true. the beginning of Yahoo, and I'm not letting it go. Well, he's the only Yahoo with problems. Do you have any other questions, Michael? <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, I want to make a couple of comments. Let's not spend the night here, guys. Um, I think I had a conversation with you all back about the general deterioration of some products that you're involved with, like hard drives, or yes. increasing their warranties and all that sort of thing. Yes. And your 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 th philosophy is you, you replace the hardware every four years, hopefully. Yeah. Five uh, five years. Okay, five years. And with this problem coming on, you may have to Seagate. You may have to uh, decrease that. Seagate has turned around and halved all their warranties. They've okay. dropped their standards because that's the only way that they can pick up additional, you know. Uh, and business. when it comes to PCs, that's one of the uh, problems with PCs is that the hard drive is spinning all the time, and it's mechanical. Therefore, it's going to wear out probably before anything else on a PC. And I think we have to start looking at that as we go forward to see what your deterioration rate is compared to what it's been historically, because in the last few years, PCs have been pretty reliable. Even some of those old clunkers I got from you, I can turn them on and most of them work, except the ones that are really sad. And I can turn around and give those to the kids. So my point being that if I was in your position, I would want to sort of keep an eye on that deterioration rate because that could impact your four or five year cycle, like you're saying. That would be a chunk of change. And the other thing that I, uh, I'm concerned about <coughs> that Mr. Jones brought up is everything is going to the cloud and we like to keep things up there, keep it simple, move up with technology, but there's something to be said for security and all that other sort of thing to do it in-house. And so far you've done just about everything in-house. You have control over the security more so than you do if you're out <coughs> of the cloud. As we all know, those clouds have had some serious security problems. So. I think we'd want to move into that very carefully and slowly, if it was up to me. And that's all I have. A couple of quickies. What, what, how do you define a workstation, Paul? I mean, what is, what, in your opinion, a workstation? We talked about It's a computer, a monitor, a keyboard, speakers, mouse, um, maybe uh, something that they require, you know, special with it. Um, sometimes uh, we have to worry about Monitor, computer. Yeah. yeah, we have to worry about access to router or server. No, the server is not a workstation. Okay. The server serves files. Yeah, the workstation requests. Okay. And uh, I was talking about looking at staff development, and and you didn't spend any money in eleven twenty three hundred and twelve, and and your budget in fourteen was twenty two fifty, and you spent about three. So if you look for you you required six thousand that was that would have been a two hundred and sixty percent increase it's probably what brought alarms to the uh, reviewer probably want to see a more moderate increase than that so well it's a it's a fact of life increase now I've finally gotten to the point where I've got him out of training I can literally sit down and look forward yeah yeah. And you say it's expensive, twenty-five hundred bucks a course or whatever. Bringing up to speed too. Um, Absolutely. Um, I really don't uh, have anything other than that. I mean, I see most of the stuff here is zero percent. You got minus fifty-three percent, zero percent. The big one was is equipment maintenance, and you're annualized out for this year at about. Um, 
Oh, 18, did I figure? 17, 18,000. So, I mean, you know, the increase was not... Uh, Jerry, you okay? Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Okay. A little bit of contemplation time doesn't hurt, you know. Uh, I got a couple of cookies. Each department has their own programs. Do they attention. all talk to each other? Yeah. Or what I'm really getting at is emergency management. I know that some towns have <coughs> set up a program called called Red People put their cell phone numbers in or their email addresses and there's an emergency like a tornado or something, you know, send out a notice to anybody. The, the state is supposed to take care of that. Right. They, they've delayed their implementation. Every time they've set a date, they've missed it. Um, we have a non-emergency number that is uh, an email notification and Facebook notification. Anybody can set up if you go to. Now, uh, that'll be parking lots, uh, snow emergencies, trash isn't being picked up. Uh, uh, we give them a variety of ways to go, you know, whether it's a, a call on your cell phone, which we currently have 85 people, <coughs> or you could get an email, which we have 495 people. And I think we have 857 on the Facebook page picking these notices up. Uh, the only thing I could do is we could put out the trough, but we can't make the horse drink. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, yeah. people are aware of it. They yeah, the state, the state has dropped the ball on this, and they own the data, so I can't touch it. Okay. I think we've pretty much tortured Mr. I just want to make one more comment, if I may. Comment, a question? basic uh, comment. Well, it basically re reinforces his request for money for training. Okay. When you bring on a new person like we did, and it seems like you made a good choice <coughs> there, by the way, um, <coughs> you need to get him trained. And I appreciate that. So I had no problem with the original request for the training. And uh, because there's a lot of things to consider in your environment. Not somebody like me who will work for a particular company with a particular vendor. You work with everybody's stuff, and I'm using a nice term there, stuff, and uh, it can be challenging. So I think all the training you can get, good for you, and for your partner in crime. Thank Madam you. Chair, just a couple of quirkies. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go around the table sh by a show of hands. Anybody else who has a quickie before we finish this out tonight? Okay, that's it then. Do you have MSDN subscription? I had it. Uh, most of it's free on the web now. They dropped it. They had dropped a requirement on it at one point. They brought it back. Um, so you have no MSDN subscription right now, no. It's not but I, I can great. access TechNet and oh, I I get all the info for I understand free. totally. And, and, yeah, and this speaks to, you know, this continuous desire to go back to the old ways. You know, it's what is what is today's date? Like yeah. December eighth, something like that. December tenth. December tenth. Right. See, I log trash of time because I work and I work in IT, and I don't really care much about time. I only care about deadlines. But the bottom line is this, Michael: it's something that you're missing about what's going on with training. Same with you, Jerry. Is that since the beginning of this month, I have taken over 27 courses, all of them free online. That's the nature of the business now. You don't need to go flying around taking courses in a classroom. That's ancient history. We th I think we heard you, Tim. Right. No, but you keep going back to okay. the same right. paradigm. Point, and I also want to point out, point relative to your statement on the cloud services, Michael, you are not familiar with, with cloud services office, so I think your comment is uh, uh, uninformed. Okay. I'm not going to get into a technological debate here on that issue. I we'll conclude go. my comments. Thank you very much. Going Move back. The number? Yes, please. $199,851. All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. What? Or was there an abstention? I'm sorry, Tim. Did you have your hand up or down? I'm unanimous. All right, unanimous. Well, I'm curious. If I have a tablet and I'm working on it, is that my workstation? Yeah, right now, no, because a tablet does not interface with anything that we have. No, it doesn't interface with the Internet? It interfaces with the Internet, but it doesn't interface with our databases or, or, or our client server software. Their tablets have been slow to move in. Oh, so you don't accommodate the device in your infrastructure 
that's no, that's you could thing. technically get on a tablet here. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, I could get on a tablet here. I've got the only tablet-based software that it's going right now, and that's my help desk software. But the fire department software, the town clerk software, tax collector, none of that has been, none of those companies have moved to tablet. <coughs> I'm ask the question because offline during break, there's been a robust conversation about what a workstation means, believe it or not, in this <coughs> activity. And I'm speaking in generic terms and you're speaking within the town's yes. infrastructure terms. And uh, thank you. I didn't mean to take up any time. That was supposed to be a very quickie. Okay. Are you done now? I didn't even Lincoln attend. To, I didn't He's even attend to start, right. Madam Chair. Thank you, thank you Paul. Paul. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. Good All right. Nobody go anywhere. Um, we are going to get through those three sections of minutes. All right. One way or the other. June seventeenth. What else is going to be Make a motion. Oh, old business, new business, or <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, have a good time. Go ahead, Stephen. <laughs> we'll accept the minutes from June 17th. Again. Okay. Any corrections on those? I'm just going to ask it in general. All right, any corrections on June 17th? Seeing none, do I have a second on the motion? Second. I did. Well, All those in favor? Yeah, I thought we did too, but just to make sure. All right, now I moving abstain on. I abstained because I was not here. Okay, okay. Jerry Whoever abstains. Glenn abstains. Who else was not here June 17th? You were all going to check your calendars. I, I was here. Okay. Mike I was mean, here. It's, I can see that. I yeah. Okay, um, moving on to October 21st. Yes. Corrections. Do I, you want a motion on that too? Or? Make well, let's, let's correct them. Okay. Um, I have a correction on page one. For some reason, my name wasn't. <laughs> I did not take these minutes. No, no I think I didn't. didn't. Oh, is that the yes. one that probably did yeah. the girl did? And oh, she yeah, did the, the best. So. Okay, she, she did just the best didn't, she could she not just didn't put place. my name in there. I should be somewhere in that list of members present. And were you really here? Oh, I was here. And actually, yeah. my name is spelled wrong. That is mine. Can you prove it? Well, yeah. Yes, I can. John, my what name is take? spelled wrong. That is mine. What day was that again? The 20th. Yep. I can go back through these. There's a lot of errors. Yeah. Right. I think we'd all feel back. more comfortable if Joan took her took charge of these minutes and brought us, uh, you know, a fresh set. Bring us a fresh set. Spell my name. You wrong. can go back through the tape. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Or oh, correct what you can without even going through the tape would be would be an improvement. Okay, because there are, I, when I read them, I saw a lot of stuff that right. needed to be changed. And I'm sure you can fix a lot of stuff, and it'd be much more yeah. efficient doing it that way. I'm happy way. with that. What right. did my What did I get this colorful one? <laughs> oh, you're a colorful guy, Richard. Oh, so. you all right? Okay. All right. So we're going to wait on those. So yeah. could we? Is it possible to have those back tomorrow? No matter what. Well, oh, don't rush it. How about really next week? At the school night. Probably. I'm not going to be here that night. Oh, that's right. Um, I'll try my best to get right. it tomorrow night. We could probably approve them without you, <laughs> as long as we had them. Yeah, well, she easily emails them out religiously, so we'll be able to chance. She can, right. she can email them from California, wherever you happen to be. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So we're not going to do that already. Moving on to December 2nd. December 2nd. That, that set of minutes is becoming an orphan. Yeah. Um, December 2nd. Yes, what about it? Any changes on page one? I didn't read it, so. Two? Three? Four? Five. Would you like a motion? I would. The motion would be a um, couple minutes for December 2nd. Second. All those in favor? Right. Um, Anybody abstain because they weren't here? Second. Mike Pierce. Mike Pierce seconded. All right. I second. So we're clean with that. Everyone was here on the second. All we've got now is this 21st. On October 21st, you're going to right. send out to us again. No, you've, you've had them. Joan will send you a corrected version. Okay. Okay? And whenever we get that, we'll, we'll correct that. Thank you. Um, tomorrow night was changed. Everybody got a schedule. Yes. Um, a new schedule. I even... First. She didn't Posted an agenda. You have the copies of the agenda. We did not have enough information right. to come to a final review. 
final review is now going to be January 6th, which originally, for those who have <coughs> served on the committee before, we had one night for Warren articles. When I heard there was going to be a glut of Warren articles this year, I broke it up into two nights. So nobody has to panic thinking we're taking any time away. From what I understand, some Warren articles we can breeze through very quickly. Some will involve discussion. So what I will do is I will break them down, not necessarily in order, okay, but the ones that we can breeze through, I will put in the night that we will have our final review. I'm also going to try to move the school Warren articles into the school, back into the school review next week. I'm going to, I haven't contacted PSA 90 yet to see if we could do that. So the overall picture is that things have been moved around but we still have more time than we had last year and the question arose if we were legally in bounds by the dates that we have to submit everything and we are. We have, we're totally in bounds with moving that. As a matter of fact, um, we have total closeout a week before the final deadline should we have a snow emergency and have to move anything. So I just want you to feel confident in that. that so Tomorrow is legal town manager, and we're not doing any warrant articles tomorrow night, right? We did legal already. We did legal No, we no. taped. The both were on the table. We tabled three different things. Yep. Um, revenues, where is legal, and town right. manager. Town manager. And of course, we couldn't do revenues because we didn't get them till tonight. So tomorrow night, what we're going to do is we're going. It looks a little backwards. But it's because we're going to take the things we have not taken at all, and that is the revenues. And then I want to review the 2014 um, November financials if we have any questions. You just got them tonight. So you're going to have a little homework to do before tomorrow night because I can't push that forward anymore. We don't have any more room. Um, after that, I, I, Christy has this as well. I want some sort of projection, and I'm sure you do too, as to what we may or may not end up with in this year because as we were going through the budget some of the things we highlighted they weren't huge ticket items but you know five thousand here ten thousand there that could possibly be paid out of the surplus out of this year's budget thus eliminating it from next year's budget and then the items that we deferred we will then go back to okay and there were only two that we actually move forward and that was the legal budget and the town manager budget. Okay? Did I miss anything? Yes. I what? believe Silberdick is supposed to be in here somewhere. Well, that's a different issue. No, At but the, is it the no, same? No, no, agenda? wait a minute. Yeah. That's di it's different. I'll I'll talk on that. All right. Um, at the point that I made this up I and posted that. it, I didn't know about I that. Understand that. Okay. All right. So well, something has something. arisen with the trustees and Norm Silva Dick did send me a copy. I think I sent it to yeah, everybody. Yeah, did. Thank you. All right. So you've got the explanation. He will come in with you. We're going to have Attorney Gerald here anyway. So I think that was an email that was a suggestion. Of what, but so albeit. More like a prediction. Yeah. Uh, well, no. It was more that he, I think he assumed that we would want him here, which we did, and he it, it hadn't been an invitation yet, mm -hmm. but it would have been um, after I spoke to everybody tonight. But I just want to confirm he's on the agenda, and he he will be on the agenda okay. tomorrow night um, under legal, probably. Okay. All right. Before legal, you mean? Well, before <laughs> we do a legal review, but he and Mark will be in the same. Yeah. Oh, revenues. Did I get a copy of revenues? I don't know. Did you? I don't read your email. Michael. I don't remember seeing it. No, I think we all got copies. <coughs> <coughs> Michael, get here five minutes earlier that's than you do. Oh, that's what he's, he wants. No, he wanted, I'm on uh, revenue. He's talking oh, about no. what you we get. We don't have it. it. Well, passed it we don't have it. On the I don't have <laughs> revenues. You don't have revenues in your book? Not. I don't, I don't think so. Passed out revenue. When? Revenues this is what they look like, Mike. Yeah. They're under D, uh, D, in Appendix D. No, they were they were missing from the reg original sheet. But we got them eventually. Yeah, we got them. No. I think Christy brought them in. Oh, okay. Probably I'm October see 30. Are you telling me? That again. I wasn't here. Mike, yeah. are you telling me you still don't have any? I'm, I'm going to look at one. Maybe I do have it in this mess. You have that? Let me take a look. 
Yeah. When did she pass about 11 6 I'll, You know what? I'll ask her to just send me that file and um, I'll make copies. Uh, no, you don't have to do that. I think I, if I can get the I'll, I'll borrow Jerry's. Can we request the one on his word format rather than PDF? I hate PDF. You can't write on. You can't do anything with. It. Can we have a pass mm -hmm. more articles and word? We just print it out. What you? Said. Yeah. No. I. No, I, I to tell you the truth, I, I would sure prefer does. not having to change a PDF format in the Warren articles. We want them exactly as as they're written. So can we I print out what you sent us, Mark, by the town? There. Yeah. But can we have them sent to us in word well, format? Also? You, know, you know, print them out and make your, make notes on it. But I don't. So it's not just, it a, it's not just a, a PDF form. It's an actual image. So you can't even do a word search I know. You on can't it. do anything to it. It's a piece of trash. I mean, it's not so trash. much the objection to the PDF as it is. It's, it's an image. And you can't right. do a, you you can't can't do do a text search it. on it. You can't do anything what with it. What she sent out, I printed. Yeah. You can print it, but you cannot do a text not everybody search likes on to it. Print yeah. and then what do you want a text search on it? If I'm looking for a word, I want to be able to open it up and look for a particular word. Oh my God! Find oh my God! Yeah, I know it. Was, <laughs> I mean, this is only the 21st century. You would think I was in the 22nd century. Somebody second that, all right? Yes. Are we seconding uh, what? Getting a not getting a dot format? Oil, okay, we don't have numbers from it yet. Anything about insurances? We have a second on adjournment. No. Yeah. I seconded it. All right. All those in favor at 9:30. Thank you.